so today we'll be designing a simple login page now the simple login page we'll be designing is a popular one we all know facebook this is facebook login page so we'll be designing facebook login page today so let's get started so first of all we need to create a folder for those of you that are still struggling don't still know how to create a folder yet so we need to start from scratch and create a folder and link all our files so for the, let's so to create a folder all you have to do is to right click on your desktop on the home of your desktop click on new then click on folders inside the folder let's name our folder facebook 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 so we name our folder facebook now inside this facebook folder we've created our facebook folder so inside this facebook folder i want to create another two folder so we'll create let's double click on it to open it when you open it right click on it to on the screen then click on new then click on folder so inside facebook folder we'll create another folder we'll call this folder css so that's folder will be holding all our css then we'll create another folder too so right click on it again click on new click on folders so this folder will hold our images so say images so we can cl right click on it and then leave this screen so let's close this one don't need this one again so inside our facebook folder we have two folder inside css and image folder inside this folder so now let's go back to our subline to get started so to get started we'll first of all do ctrl n to open a new file and ctrl s to save so when you want to save your work we'll look for we'll click on desktop at the left side of our screen and click on desktop scroll down locate facebook folder okay this is facebook folder we created when you get to locate the folder tap on it once and click on open here so click on open here so when you open it you saw the two folder we created look at the two folder we created the images and the css folder is there so inside here we'll create a new file this is the file that will be working with the html file so we'll call it facebook dot html always learn to save your html files dot html so click on save now we have our html file so all you just need to do is write htm html and click on tab on your keyboard to show the html structure here we'll write facebook home so so we we'll write facebook home at the title bar so when you right click on your keyboard on your mouse and click on open on browser you see we have this facebook home that we just created so if you look at the top of it the nav top of it you see that it's showing facebook home on the title part of it so but if you look at the one of facebook we have the background as light gray kind of light gray so let's give it some style to make this our own the background turn to light gray so to do that let's create a css file so ctrl n to create a new css file ctrl s to save so when you want to save it make sure you save it inside the css folder that we created inside this facebook folder so let's click on double click on the css folder so we are now inside the css folder so let's call it fb underscore style dot css fb underscore style dot css so you click on save so this is our css file so having done us get our gotten our css file ready all we need to do is just to say body we want the body to be light gray something like light gray so as i say body then you say background background color should be f o f two sorry f zero f two f five that's the color facebook is using so if we go back to our file and refresh nothing happens the reason is because we've not linked our files our css file to our html so to do that we need to write the link attribute so just write link 
then click on tab to show the link then when you right link click on tab then right, access the folder using you write the name of the folder we put our css file inside the css folder so write the name of the folder then slash the name of the css file fb underscore style dot css so if we go back to our browser now and refresh you see our background is now the same color like that of facebook okay so let's get started the one of facebook we have two style we have one style at the right we have two section section one at the right and section two at the left section two section one carries this facebook logo and this content here why this other section carries this login button and this other stuff so let's design it let's get started with the design so inside our body we're gonna have section so inside our body we'll have one section so this section so section tab then inside the session we'll give it a class i just give it a class of main underscore section okay then inside the section we want all the text to be at the center so for example if i write something like this now if i write let's say i put a p now and say tab and i say arrow uh, let's say i say facebook and go to my browser and save you see that the facebook is at the left side of the screen but if i want it in such that the facebook should be at the center there's a css there's a css and uh, sorry an html tag or an HTML element called center. So all you just need to do is write S E N T E R. That's the CSS HTML attribute. Sorry, HTML tag called center. So center. You have to close the center tag. So when you close the center tag, and you tab it. If you go back to your browser and Control S to save, then go back to your browser and refresh you see that your test is now at the center that's the magic this center tag does for you it carries your text your set your text and your inline level element to the center so we'll be needing that center tag there so let's remove this one we don't need this one now in our design so let's give ourselves a div here let's call this div let's give this div a class class of flex then let's give ourselves another div inside this flex let's give ourselves another div then let's Let's just put some random text here. Let's say P, P, P inside this div and then give yourself another div here and say H, H, H. So what this does is that if we go to, if, if we go to our browser now, if we go to our browser and refresh, we have our P on one line and our H on another line. That's because they are block level elements, so they will always stay on their own line. But inline level elements would always stay in the same line. So, but because they are block level elements, they will stay on their own line. So we want to flex the 
this content so that one will be at the right and the other one will be at the left so to do that let's give this one this first div a class let's give it a class of width with two with underscore two so let's give this one also the same class with two so copy with two class we'll go to our css where we say with two Let's give it a width of 40%. So they will both have a width of 40%. Let's, let's give it a margin or two. So we'll go back to our CSS. Then we have flex uh, HTML. Sorry, we'll go back to our HTML. We have what we call flex here. So this flex basically will help us to we just name the class flex so if we go back to our css copy that flex now and then put in your css here and then we say display flex sorry display flex if you go back to your browser now and refresh you see that we have one the both p both our p and h is not staying in the same line that's because we flex them with two here okay so the next thing we want to do now is to start working on the on this side first of all we want to design this side of it so we want to design this side first so let's start working on this side so the things we need inside this side we need first of all we need a div let's go to give a uh we need to design the input area so to design the input area, we need a div here. So this div, we'll call it, we'll give it a class. So let's say the class is white, white underscore background. Okay. So we'll copy this white background class now and right here we paste it here we say background white so we're turning the background to white so i'm using fff for the background so what we need inside the inside this form now let's go back to our html so inside our html let's write the form then write a form sorry A form tab click on form and write tab then the next thing you want to do is let's centralize our content so we'll do center we want to put all the text in the center click on center and tab or type center click on tab the next thing is input we need an input for the first input that's where we put the type should be text then we need another input so input the type should be password so if we go back to our browser now and refresh we have two inputs here first input here the second input we want them to stay on different lines so to do that, we'll put a B arrow here, B arrow. So this B arrow will basically, so let me zoom this thing a little bit so you can see, okay. So the B arrow will break this line to make the input stay on their own. So this input, we we'll want to give this input a class. So let's say class. Let's say input width. The class should be input underscore width. 
so we're giving the class of input width so this class will copy the same class and give it to the other input too so input width so let's copy the class for the input width let's go to our css and dot input width so for the input width we want to give you some style so for the style we want to, the width of the input to be 90 percent so let's give it a width of 90 percent and a border one pixel So then let's give it a margin top of 20 pixel. Let's say font size font size of 18 pixel then Let's say height, height of 50 pixel. Let's see what we got. We'll go back to our browser and refresh. Okay, we have our two input here. One is here, the other one is here. Okay, that's good. But if you click on the inputs, we don't want this black line to be showing. This is black outline. So for us to remove the black outline, let's say outline none. Outline none. Then let's say we want to do border radius. Now, if you go back to our browser, you see that the input is sharp. The edge of the input is sharp. But if you look at the one of Facebook, the edge is a little bit round. So to make it round a bit, we'll use our border radius property. So border border radius. So let's give it a border radius of eight pixel. Eight pixel. Okay. So The border radius of eight pixel. So the next, another thing we want to do is our input. If we click on it, it's still showing the line. Although we remove the outline, if though we remove the outline, so you notice that the background. If we click on it, the background is not the line is not changing to blue. But if you look at that of Facebook, if you click on it, you see that the background, the border is now blue. The border is now showing blue. But if our one, if you click on it, it's not showing blue yet. So to do that, we need to do the on focus. So there's a CSS to the selector called focus. So when you copy this, your width, copy the width uh, class, then paste it here. Then you do this quotation, sorry, this column, and then you write focus, focus. What this does is that anytime the inputs, they focus on the input, like somebody wants to type on the input, the color should change to blue. That's what we're trying to do here now. So anytime the person wants to click on the input, the color should change to blue. So let's say border one pixel, sorry, one pixel. Let's use ridge. Ridge is another type of border that you can use. One piece of ridge blue. Okay, so if you go to our browser now and refresh, our input is not there. So when you click it now, it's not showing blue. But if you notice the blue, the blue is not like that of Facebook blue. So we need Facebook blue. So to get Facebook blue, there's something they called 
inspect on your browser inspect is a developer tool that helps you to to design web page more easier and to get access to the web page to control your web page for example if i want to take this facebook blue color now and i don't have it what do i need to do i can inspect it and take the color from there so let's to inspect any web page any web page you can just right click on your browser on the web page then you go to the last the la this suggestion here on this menu you see inspect there when you click on inspect it will show you the developer source code so on this right side of the screen you will see the source code facebook source code so this is these are the code that we that they used to write facebook so at the top you see the html code then at the down you see the css code so this part of it shows the css why this part of it shows the html for those of you that are using chrome browser so to pick this color that is in the button and this blue color on the button you have to click on this mask this icon here this cursor icon here then you use it to touch the button so when you touch the button you've now selected the button so when you see a uh, css here, let's scroll down here you see that your css the color of the button is here blue so we can just copy this color now Yes, so we'll copy this color. We can just copy this color. And then instead of using that blue, we can just put this blue here. It must be a decimal. So it's a decimal color will start with arch. So that's the blue. So we've got in Facebook blue color. So if we want to do the button now, we'll just take this blue color from it. That's code. So if you refresh now, if you click on it, yes, it's now blue. That's good. So, another thing again we want to do is to is to add some shade, some color shade to it. If you look at one of Facebook, there's a shade to it. There's a kind of blue shade to the back of the input, but I don't no shade yet, no shade yet. So to do that shade, all we need to do is to do border box shadow. So this box shadow we put shade. So let's say zero pixel, zero pixel, three pixel. Then let's call this color. I'm just picking colors that will fit in. Okay, I think this color would work. So if we go to our browser and refresh. Yeah, there's a, there's a shade now. We can see the shade at the back of the input now. So we're getting there. So back to our design. So inside this background, white background design, we'll need to add some some styles to it there. So let's say border radius. You know what border radius is used for to make the edge a little bit round. So let's say border radius 10 pixel. So let's say box shadow. Box shadow 2 pixel. 4 pixel. 5 pixel. And put a color for it for it. So for us we'll be using forty two. Okay. Then let's say margin top fifty pixel. So if we go back to our browser now, you see that this thing is close to the up here. The margin pixel fifty pixel will bring it down a little bit. Then this and these edges these edges are too sharp that are border edges that we did we make it a little bit round so let's refresh so yes we've, we've pushed it down and 
the edge is round and if you notice it there's kind of dark shadow underneath here that dark shadow is for the bot boss shadow that we did that boss shadow we put some kind of shadow around the element so that's that for that so the next thing we're gonna do is on our css let's go back to the top of our css let's say let's use a universal selector this is called the universal selector you see you click on shift and then star and then eight on your keyboard click on shift and eight on your keyboard to put this star so this star we just want to do some basic styling and say margin zero so we are initializing all the margin that there should be no margin and for the padding there should be no padding so we will not have any default space that will give us edit when styling so this one will automatically remove all default space for the margin or padding that will give us edit while styling so the next thing we want to do now we want to put button so we'll put a br2 to break the line we have to break the line then we'll say button so inside our button we're going to call this button login log sorry login so this button this login button we're going to give it a class so let's give it a class of lg lg underscore btn lg underscore btn so let's copy our lg underscore btn login button and go to our test our style style sheet so dot to access it and then paste it so if we save first and save our html and go to our browser you see that we have our button but it's very small and it's at the center it's very small and it's at the center so let's style it to look like this facebook one so to do that let's say facebook here to to remove that language translator that is showing there so to do that now what we'll do now is to start that button so let's give the button a width a width of 82 percent 82 percent then let's say height 50 pixel test align let's say test align center then font size font size 25 pixel let's say color color white you can use white you can use fff do it both mean the same thing then background background we already have facebook blue background I told you how to inspect so that's where we got the color from so you can just copy that color now and paste it here for the background color so let's save so you can just save let's imagine top also to put some magic at the top 20 pixel so let's go back to our work let's refresh okay we have our color now and our background so the next what we want to do is to remove the border this black border around the around the login button let's try and remove it so let's say border or we can just give another class here Let's give another class here called button. Since all the button on the site will be removing the border, 
we can just say body button border none so basically all the button on the side will be removed the border so no need to write border none for every button we created so that's it then we want to make the edge a little bit round like this one too so to do that let's just say border radius 8 pixel so then we say 6 pixel 6 pixel so that should do the magic yes it's good it's okay like that so that's all for that so then so we we'll go to our html and we we'll go to our html we want to put the forget password if you go back to facebook you see we have forget password here and then create account and then this line so let's do that so we have another br here okay this let's have a p tag here so you say p tag p and tab then let's give this p tag a class let's call the class p underscore f underscore p let's just give it a random class called p underscore class underscore p so inside this p tag we'll have an a tag so let's have an a tag so the a tag will write forget password so that should carry us to page to recover our password forgotten password okay so if we go back to our browser now and refresh we have our forget password there so there is an underline if you look at it there is a line under it so we we'll have to remove the line under it so but first of all our white background we need some space under it under our white background so let's say padding padding button let's say 30 pixel so this one will put some space on that our uh, white background so if we refresh we have some space there now that's good that's better so for the for the a for the link attribute that has this line under it if you go back to our link attribute you notice that there's a line underline under it we need to remove the underline so to remove that underline what we need to do is to access our class this class that we created this f underscore p underscore f underscore p let's copy this class the a tag is inside of this class so we're going to say this a that means the a tag that is inside this class we are targeting it we're going to say test decoration none so we are removing that underline so by removing the underline we we'll say test decoration none then we're still going to change the color the color of the text should be blue we want to change the color to blue then we want to add some margin so let's add some margin margin let's say margin 20 pixel for up and down and then zero pixel for left and right so let's go back to our browser now and refresh we have our blue color here and the margin pixel is there but the blue color is not like facebook blue so instead of using just blue let's use facebook blue so if you refresh it you notice that the color did not change also that's because we've clicked this link before and any link you've clicked before 
and on by default the link will change to purple but in the, the color of the link will change to purple by default but our own in this case we don't want the color to change to purple even after clicking on the link we still want it to remain on our blue color so to do that we just need to style this a tag again so let's assess this a tag then let's say a which is the a tag then we use a pseudo selector called over sorry on active there's a pseudo selector called active so you say to access a pseudo selector you use this column and then write the name of the pseudo selector so anytime the link is active we still don't want the color to turn to purple we want the color to still be blue so we say color let's copy our color code my color code is this so we'll paste it here so if you refresh now if you refresh you see that when you, you hover on it is not a blue that's because we use on hover then if we was well, another we'll do again we'll do this we we'll repeat this one let's copy this let's do on focus then let's say on let's say on hover So we can remove this on focus. On focus is for input. So we don't need on focus here. So another thing again we can still do, we can just say copy this color here too. We just come here and paste the color here. So we can just still do that too. So that we'll be sure that the color will change to blue. So when you refresh now the color is not blue. So even if you click on it, the color will not change to purple. It's still the same blue. So that's that. And that thing we need again is we need an underline. So we need if you go back to one of Facebook, we need an underline. We need to rule this line. This line here, we need it. So to do that line, we just have to come back here and then under this under this P tag, let's write an H H arrow. H arrow is basically for an horizontal rule. So it will rule it horizontally. So if you go back to our browser now and refresh, you see that there's an horizontal rule. However, the horizontal rule in this our case is spanning 100% of this white space. We want it to have some space here and some space here. Like the one on Facebook, there's a space here. There's a space here. So let's tie our horn to put some space in between the horizontal rule. So we'll come back here. We can just say form form h arrow. Since this h arrow is inside our form, we can just say form h arrow. Then we'll say width. Let's give it a width of 80%. Let's say 85. 85%. Then let's say a border border of one pixel solid. Use I want to use a color code. So this is a color code. So if I refresh now, you see the color, the link, the line is not okay. Always learn to control S first before you refresh. Control S to save first before you refresh. So the next thing is to put our create account button. So we'll put another button and then create new. new account
okay so but before they create new account we still have to put okay so create a new account there so let's save go to our browser and refresh you see create new account is there but the button is not looking like facebook one. let's make it green green and bold so let's give it a class let's give it our create account button a class call it a class of cro let's call it a class give the class cro underscore btn that means create account btn so let's copy this class Control C to copy. Go back to our CSS. To access the class, you use dot, and then so for our CRO BTN class, all we need to do is to give it a width. A width of fifty percent, fifty percent. Then let's give it a height of fifty pixel to, like we gave to the other button. A height of fifty pixel. Color, color should be white. So you can just write white. You can use color code, FFF. But ash FFF. But me, I'm using white for in this case. Then let's say the background. The background. We don't know the background of Facebook. If you okay, let's just say background green. Background green. Then let's say font size. Twenty pixel. Twenty pixel. Margin. margin top and bottom 20 pixel then left and right zero pixel okay so if we go back to our browser now and refresh we have this green color but i think it's not the same thing like facebook green facebook green is kind of lighter than this one so to get facebook green let's inspect again to get facebook green so all you just need to do is click on the button right click right click on the button okay right click on the page first when right click on this page then click on inspect so when you click on inspect you have to first of all touch this icon cursor icon here make sure it's blue make sure it's showing blue here then you take it to the button when you take it to the button and click on the button we will have the color code for the button so scroll down here's the color code for the button so we'll copy our color code for the button you can copy it with the hash also okay so when you copy it you come here instead of green here you can just say arch the color code so if we go back to our home, cancel this. If we go back to our home now and refresh, yeah, we have Facebook green color. So the border is too sharp. Let's make it run a little bit. So border radius. Give it a border radius of six pieces. okay so that's it we're done with one side let's do the other side the other side say facebook help facebook helping you connect and share with your people in your life helping you facebook helps you to connect and share with the people in your life so let's do this other side so to do the other side all we just have to do is go to our HTML code. So let's go to our HTML code. This side we write Facebook. 
we need to write the other side here so inside the other side now let's give it let's call give, call it div let's call it div come to write div and click on tab and write div and click on tab it should open and closing div then inside this div let's give this div a class let's call this class fb underscore area and fb area so inside this fb area let's write an image image sorry img for image then click on tab then to show the image then let's inside the image we have an image folder so let's say images images then slash let's say the name of the image should be facebook 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 underscore logo dot svg dot svg now if you go to our, then let's write a text here let's give you a test a p tag here then let's write the test let's let me just go back to the browser and copy this text i need this text so avoid typing and just copy okay okay i have my test now you can go and copy yours too okay so if we go back to our own now and refresh we have our facebook help you connect with friends there and then the image is there but the image is broken here the reason is because we've not downloaded the image so to download the image we need to go back to facebook we don't have the image on our 16 so let's go to facebook so to download this image on facebook you just click right click on the image on facebook.com just right click on this image now when you right click on the image see save as image so you click on save as image so when you want to save it as image first of all you must save it to the, the same folder we are working with the facebook folder we are working with and that facebook folder is inside your desktop so you go to you click on desktop when you click on desktop you scroll down scroll down to facebook so the facebook text uh, folder is there double click on it inside the image folder you double click on the image folder that's where we'll be saving it into so let's give it face fb underscore logo just give it fb a name of fb underscore logo is already in svg format the document type is already in svg format so don't write any dot anything just write fb underscore logo there and save so we've downloaded it here so let me remove this one here so if i refresh now you see our facebook logo is here because we've downloaded it so so that's it So the next thing we want to do now is to make it smaller. So go back to our HTML. This class FB area, FB area. Let's copy this class FB area that we created. So. We we'll go back to our HTSS. So under here, we we'll paste this class dot and then paste the class. Then we're gonna give it some style. So inside this FP area, let's say test align left. Then font size let's give the font size of 22 pixel then let's give it a font family 
of sans serif then for the logo we want to also reduce the size of the logo so dot fp area then for the logo we want to say for width let's give it a width of 300 pixel then let's save Control s to save then go back to your html Control s to save again and then go back to your file let's refresh let's refresh okay it's a little bit better now a little bit better now so if we inspect our work and view it on the mobile version you see it's kind of messed up but don't worry we'll get to that soon so if you read on the mobile version it's still showing the same way it is on the system version on the mobile version but we're still gonna do mobile responsiveness very soon so we'll get to that so this text we want to bring it to the center so to bring it to the center tests sorry let's put add some party So if we go back to our first main section we created here, we created a section called mix, a, a class called main session. So inside our main session, let's go back to our top of our HTML, and uh, sorry, our top of our CSS and give and give this class a property of padding, padding top 60 pc. So this padding top 60 pc would basically push everything down okay better so it's better that way so we'll push both this side and this side down a little bit then that's that next thing we want to do now is to okay let's try and make this tie a little bit okay so let's have some padding here to push this text forward like one of facebook you see it's closer to this side of the browser so our us let's try and push it to this side of the browser so inside our class this class that we say is with two instead of margin button two pieces we made a mistake here let's try and correct it to margin auto not margin button auto so delete the margin button there so go back to your browser now control s to save then go back to your browser and refresh you see here it's a little bit okay now than the way it was before whereby it was at the left side so it's now okay so our logo is let's make the logo a little bit let's make it straight line in the same straight line with this text so let's make it straight line with this text so to make that we'll go back to our logo now and the logo is inside this FB area. So we we'll copy the class FB area. Then we already have the class FB area. Okay, we don't have the class FB area image. So this one is supposed to be FB area image IMG. FB area IMG. So supposed to be FB area IMG. Then let's chant make the image go back a little bit so to make the image go back a little bit we say margin left margin left
let's say minus 30 pixel then let's say margin top minus 40 pixel margin button let me see minus 10 pixel okay so if we go back to our image now and refresh guys it's, it's a little bit okay now it's a little bit okay so we have facebook connect you with friends and families that crab bra is there so it's okay let's see the one on facebook yeah we're getting it there we're getting there so basically we we've designed facebook we've designed facebook login page but we're still lacking something on us still lacking something this button is kind of long longer than us as is this short so let's try and make it increase the button so that button is the login btn so instead of 82 percent let's give it 90 percent so save ctrl s to save go to your browser and refresh okay better 90 pixel then under this place we have we still have some content under this place look at one of facebook we have some content create a page let's copy this content copy so this content now we want to put it inside our own let's put it under here on our own so to do that we'll go to our facebook html file then scroll down under this form okay under this button under the form sorry let's look at it very carefully under this white background it must be under the white background so the white background div ends here so you look at this div now and trace it down this is the div it must be under the white background div the reason is because if you go back to your browser the content is under this is not inside this white background it's under the white background so look at this one it's under the white background so if you put it inside the white background it will not work so you must make sure you are under this white background div so under the white background div now you can now put another div so let's could put another div let's call this div let's give this div a class call this page call this class page underscore recommendation recommendation then inside the page recommendation let's have an a tag press a right a and tab to show the a tag inside the a tag we'll write create create a page then after the data I go down this should be covered this monitor page after the data I go down right span right span then right space for for a celebrity underscore brand sorry I say underscore comma and and business so if Christian set up a page for celebrity brand and business the control s to save so let's read on our browser first okay we have our content here let's add some space let's have some space to it so to add some space to it, just copy this tie that is here 
this page recommendation class copy it go back to our css file then under it you put dot first and then paste your page recommendation style so inside the page recommendation style oh we'll inside the page recommendation style we we'll have margin top margin top sorry margin top 20 pixel to put some space at the top then we need the color of the a tag inside the page recommendation we notice that we have an a tag there that is kind to create a page is different from the other span the reason is because if you create cl click on the create a page to take it to a, a page whereby you will create page on Facebook so to style that differently let's copy this our class page recommendation class then put a by styling the a inside page recommendation country s to save first if you go back to your browser you will notice that this create a page is having an underline that's because it's a link as an a tag and the color is purple because I've clicked on it once but if you look at the one of Facebook, it's black and it's not having an underline until you carry your mouse or under it. If you carry your mouse above it before it will now have an underline. So let's try and make us the same way. So to do that, you will say page recommendation, then we now put the A, we are styling the A inside page recommendation. So we say test, test decoration. We say none. This test decoration none. We go back to our browser, save, go back to your browser, then go to our work and refresh to remove the underline from the page recommendation. We we'll still want the color of it to be black. We want the color to be black. We don't want the color to be purple. So let's say color black. For me, I'm using color code for black. So if we go back now and refresh, the color is not black, but it's still not bold. It's still the same. If you look at it now, it's not bold. It's the same width as this other one. But if you look at one of Facebook, the create a page is somewhat bold. So to do that, let's go back to our HTML and then put a B tag inside here. B. So a b tag there then that will make it bold then back to our page recommendation if test decoration none okay then control s to save on your css then go back to your HTML control S to save. Make sure you are saving all your work carefully. Then if you refresh now, okay, sorry. If you, if you refresh now, our crazy page now is not bold. Crazy page is not bold. So, but if you look at this text, the text and that text of Facebook and if you go back to Facebook if you go back to Facebook you see that the test is not the same this the way the test is written the font the font family for the test and the font family for us is different and as looks scattered so we don't have Facebook font family test so to get it as usual we'll go back to Facebook right click and then inspect on Facebook right click click on inspect then you touch this you touch this this cursor here and then click on this test when you click on this test it will show you the font family that facebook use under here at our css here you see font family so just copy this font family that facebook use 
click on copy so for our C in our css we'll go to our css this page recommendation a sorry page recommendation inside the page recommendation we want to have the font add the font family so we add font family here and give it this this one that we copied from facebook so if we go back to us now so if you go back to us like this now and refresh yeah we have the same font family like that of facebook so that's it then i think that's pretty much everything we've designed facebook and it's okay but i want us to learn something new today i want us to learn to learn mobile responsiveness i want us to learn a situation whereby if you view it on mobile phone it will not be showing facebook on one side and facebook on the and this login on the other side for example now let's go to facebook mobile version so So if we go to Facebook mobile version, so we're going to Facebook mobile version now. And if you go to Facebook mobile version, you will see how it is displayed. It's different from this one that we have here. The mobile version is different from this one that we have here. This one we have here, we have Facebook on one side and then the login on one side, which is for the system version. But for the mobile version of Facebook, the login button is just, everything is just on a straight line. So to do that, we need what we call responsiveness. So we'll be teaching you people what we call responsiveness, CSS responsiveness. So that is where this if we go back to our html this metal here that we wrote here this meta okay we've not written the meta head so for us to use responsiveness we need to write a meta head property so when we write the meta head add element and then give it, it some properties we can then be able to view our website both on mobile and on desktop so let's do it please take notes be careful and watch it carefully to make your full device your website responsive you must give it the meta attribute so if you refresh our owner it's still the same way nothing has changed so let's go to the top now at the top of your facebook.html after the title after the title immediately after the title write less than then write meta meta m-e-t-a then inside the meta you give it a name attribute a name attribute the name attribute should be view view port view port give it another attribute called content content the content attribute should be you should have a value of width width equal to device so you are saying that the home page the width of the browser should be the width of the device device width so it should be equal to device width. So you're saying that the width of the browser should be equal to the device width. Then we're giving it a scale. We have to give it a scale. The default scale is, we have to initialize it. So let's initialize it to one. Initial, sorry, initial scale equal one so 
we are now initializing it that the initial scale should equal one you must write this thing if you want to build a responsive website you must write this side this meta tag you must write it just the way it is you must write it like that so that's how to view do responsive sites so after writing that if we go save it now control s save then go to our browser and refresh you see that everything is now big unlike before that it was small that's because we div we've given it a meta and saying that the scale should be one to one so the scale the font size for browser will still be the same font size for mobile phone so to make this mobile phone look like the one of facebook the imp we need to bring this input down then bring this one upward so to do that let's go to our css let's go to our css so there is what we call the at media query at media query the at media query is used to style is used to style mobile browse mobile application for example we have the desktop view or the system view and then the mobile view everything we've been designing affects both the mobile view and the system view for you to style something to affect only the mobile view you need to use the at media query so the at media query is used to style the web page based on the width of the screen of the device that is browsing the website so if for example you are using a desktop that has a big screen it will respond to the site based on the screen of your device based on the screen the amount of screen that your device have so for this one because we are using mobile screen look at it and the size is very small mobile screen it will show then for the when we come remove the inspect and then you see the device screen is very big then if you inspect now you see that the mobile the mobile version the screen is small so based on the screen of the device the phone will the style will respond you can change from different device at this top if you look at for those that are using chrome this top here you can choose different, different device that you want to style your website in so we choose iphone iphone xro motorola so for us for, for this tutorial we'll be using motorola which is this Moto 4G. That's what we'll be using for this tutorial. So for you to style it according to mobile version, now, you need to write your at media query. So let's write at, at media query. So you click on your shift and two to write at, then you write media screen and mass width so mass width of six let's say six fifty three pixel let's say six fifty pixel so what is basically saying is that any device that has six hundred and sixty pixel and below because you are giving it mass width. Mass width means if the once the device width is larger than 650 pixel, this tie should not work. So at media query helps you to style CSS based on the width of the phone. So you can check device width on your browser. If you go to your browser now, you see that this this place here is showing 360. It means that this screen, the screen of this device is 360 pixel. If you go to let's say iPhone now, uh, you see 375 pixel for this iPhone SE, 375 pixel. That's the width. Then this one is the height. Then if you go to this pixel 5, you see 390, 393 pixel for the width, and then 8, 
51 pixel for the height so that's how to know the width of device any device you can just check it on your editor on your inspect so next you want to since the width of this one is 390 and 393 it means that it's lower than what we is uh, declared here it's lower than five sorry 650 the screen of the width is of that full device is lower than 650 therefore means that this particular css that will write inside of this place would work so all you need to do is just open and close curly bracket then your css should come inside here so for our css here we want to first of all make these two you know this one is at the right this one is at the left we want to make one to be on the top the other one to be at the bottom so to do that our class that we use flex that time the flex class that we created we created a class called flex so we say flex that was what made one to go to the right the other one to go to the left so we say flex then we'll display the flex block display block will make the element to be on their own line so display display block then another thing again we want to do is the padding the padding top for the main button so main dot main underscore section Padding, padding top, zero pixel. Okay. If you notice it, our main, our between here to here, there is a big gap. So that padding top and uh, zero pixel we do, we did, we remove this space, the space that is here. Then the display block we carry this one to the top and then bring this one down so let's refresh you see we have this one at the top this one is now at the down of the page so another thing we want to do is because we gave them width of 40 percent on the mobile version we don't want them to remain 40 percent we want them to remain to be 100 percent of the screen so i will call our class the class that is old let's go back to our html this class that is holding these two section this class that is this with two with two with two class that is holding this 50 50 40 40 percent that we did the other time or dot class with two dot class then we're gonna say with 100 percent 100 percent so this will make both this and this to be 100 percent of the screen so if we refresh we have it 100 percent but for the one of facebook there there is nothing like border radius so we're going to remove this border radio that is round and then this one too we we'll try to make it white yeah it's white so let's try to make it white so So to do that, let's just say body. To make everything white, we just say body. body white color sorry background color background white so this will make the background to be white so if we refresh now everything is now white so if we go back to facebook the one of facebook this text is not showing this test this test is not showing 
So part is not showing there. So let's hide that test. To hide that test, we just need to go back to this. Ah, uh, go back to our HTML. When you go back to our HTML, you see this place that says face FB area. Inside the FB area, we have this text called this paragraph that holds the Facebook test. So just copy this FB area. Then we'll go to our, our browser, the at media query for the mobile version. We'll put the dot, paste this one, and then put the P. So we are targeting the P that is inside the FB, FB area. So let's say display none. So because we displayed it none, we must go back to the main bra the main size and say FB area. This FB area P. Let's locate the test this tie that we did for FB area P. Okay, we don't have any test for any style for FB area P. So let's paste the FB area P. Let's copy it. We copy FB area P, then we go to here, we paste it. So let's paste it. Then let's instead of displaying it now for here, we we'll display display block. So on desktop, it will be showing why on mobile to not show. So if we refresh now, FB is no longer showing. But if we go to the, if we remove this inspect and open it, you see that it's showing here. But if we inspect it now, inspect now, you notice that the P is no longer showing. Then you see that this logo is still is still too big. This logo is too big. Let's try and remove the make the logo smaller. So to make the logo smaller, we'll go back to our media query for the. Let's change the fb dot fb underscore area img. We are targeting the image that is inside, which is the logo that is inside the fb area. Let's say width two hundred pixel, two hundred pixel. Then let's save. Control S. Okay, we have it 200 pixel. Then for the FB area, then let's type. If you notice something, copy. If you notice some, let's go back to our browser. If you notice something, you notice that our image is highly. That's because we did some style to adjust the image. So let's bring the image to show back. So to make the image show back, let's say padding. Sorry, padding top. Padding top, 40 pixel. And the test align center. So that will make the image to stay at the center. Imagine auto to make it stay at the center very well. So if we refresh now. Okay, our Facebook is now at the center. That's good. Then, and that we want to start again now is the, the input. If you look at one of Facebook, the input is different from our input. Our input is still following the browser input, the browser, which is the system version input. This same system version input. We don't want this system version input for the mobile version. So inspect, 
let's try and use another type of input. <clears throat> so let's go back to our HTML, then take the class for the input, input width, that's the class we gave to the input, and then go back to our CSS. Make sure you are inside the at media screen only. So make sure you are inside the mobile version. So so let's say sorry let's say dot dot input with which is the class for the mobile for the input and let's give it a height of 40 pixel then border sorry border radius border radius of zero pixel we don't want it to be round we don't want the edge to be curved imagine so let's say background background color for the background color, we don't know the background color yet, so we go back to Facebook. We inspect. We get the background color. So for the background color, okay. So this this is the background color that Facebook used. So let's copy. If you want to type it, you can just type it manually. And just type it manually. So, so that's the background color Facebook use. If you don't know how to inspect yet, you can just type the code. But you should know how to inspect by now because we've done it three times or four times in this video. So we just copy the code for the background color. So and that thing we're do, gonna do is margin top. Let's say margin, margin top, let's say 10 pixel. Then padding, zero pixel for the top and right, then five pixel for zero pixel top and bottom, then five pixel for the left and the right. Okay, so that's it. We we'll go to our own. Let's refresh. Okay, we are getting there, but so far so good. We've been typing. You notice that there's nothing inside our input. There's no test inside. But the one of Facebook, there's a test inside this placeholder. So let's add this placeholder to our input to to bring life to the input. So go back to our HTML. For the first input, for the first input, let's give give this a placeholder, a placeholder, and inside the placeholder, we're gonna write inside the placeholder, we're gonna write email, email address. Sorry, email address or phone. Or phone number. Then for the second input, we're going to write a placeholder to then call this password. So if you refresh now, Ctrl S, save and refresh. We have a text here. You see, email address, password. So, but it's too close to this. It's too close. So we need some padding here to push the email address from this border. To push it from this border, we can just go back to our CSS. Our CSS. And then before this 
before this media query just write input here then padding padding left let's say five pixel 10 pixels sorry so you refresh now and save okay we have 10 pieces there now so that's good if you inspect control right click inspect to see the mobile version okay we're good we're going we're getting it we're getting it but for the mobile version when you click on it we don't want any outline to show this blue outline if you click on one of facebook it's showing the outline is not blue it's kind of yellow yellowish but for our own we can just leave it to, to be the blue it's stiff it's stiff fair enough it's still okay so that's that for the mobile version this test is kind of awkward so let's add some padding to it for the mobile version let's add some padding and then another thing i notice again if you notice this mobile version is still showing some shadow here but on the one of facebook there's no shadow so to do that let's remove the shadow to remove the shadow we can go to our class this class this white background class let's copy it copy the name and then go to your go to your media query inside your media query type you can just type dot white background class white background class then you say board and uh, boss shadow box shadow none so this one will basically remove the boss shadow that is in the mobile version so if you refresh now the boss the shadow is no longer there the shadow is gone then this create account input let's try to increase it a little bit so this test is not good so we'll go back to our create account our html then this create account class let's copy it then go back to the css let's say width let's say width with 50 percent then let's reduce the font size let's say font size Let's say font size. Sixteen pixel. So we'll go back to our browser. Let's refresh. Okay, we have it on one line now. Then it's that's good. We are progressing. But if you notice something, the one on Facebook, we have for the mobile version this or this thing we have two lines not one and there is an or in between this line there's an or in between this line so to do that for the mobile version we need to eliminate this i we need to remove this i and add another i for the mobile version so to do that since we use h1 for our high we use this h this h here there's this h okay we use this h here to to did it, to do the high so what we'll do now is to remove the h so let's h arrow display none display none for the mobile version we'll say h arrow display none then let's add a little bit of css inside where the h arrow is now let's add some html 
let's add some HTML and some CSS to make the mobile version have two lines. So let's say span inside the HTML. Let's write span, then let's write all. Let's write all. Then let's give this span a class. Let's give this span a class. Let's call it mobile line. Mobile underscore line. So we're giving it a class of mobile line. So we'll copy this class of mobile line. We don't want this line to chew on this. If we save now, control S to save and then remove cancel this respect. Refresh. You'll be seeing this all here. This all does not make sense here, so we need to hide it for the mobile for the system version. So we go back to our CSS, scroll up, scroll up before this before this at media query, put dot and then paste type mobile line here and then display none. So we want to hide it for the system version. So for the system version, if you refresh now, control S save, come to a browser refresh. It's no longer there but if you go to the mobile version we need it to show so to make it show on the mobile version inside this uh, at media query you at media screen you put under it come here now you display the h arrow none first then this new class that we created for the mobile version line will say display block so we want it to sorry display block so basically we want it to show so if we inspect now right click to inspect then use ref you see that if you refresh now the line the one line for the mobile version is the one line for the system version is gone and then we have our all there our all is not there the one of facebook if we go back to facebook you see the all the all is there our own the all is here but they are they don't have two lines here one line here one line here our own no line here or any no any line here so we need to add line to it to add line to it we we'll go back to our css we're going to use a pseudo selector called before and after before and after so what that does is that before and after is used to add content html content to any web page when we go to advanced css you will see how to use before and after more often but for now let me just show you how before and after work so before is used to add any content before an html element and then after is used to add any html element after an HTML element. So inside your CSS, on this your inside your mobile screen at media screen, just write dot mobile dot mobile underscore line, which is this same class that is that will display block mobile underscore line. Then put two column two columns like this and then write before before and then open and close curly brackets then we need to give it a content say content the content should be two quotation like this two quotation then shift underscore you click on shift and then click on minus to put this content Sorry, let me close it. Let me do it again. First of all, you need to put two quotation mark. So you put two quotation mark. After the quotation mark, click on shift on your keyboard and click on minus to add this line. So you click shift and minus to add this line. So that's the line there. Then you remember to put your comma, your semicolon. Then you need the color to be the color of the line we collected the other time for the h arrow 
so color we need to say cc d o d5 that's the color we're using cc d o d5 then width let's give it a width of 45 percent 45 percent so that's for the one for the before then control s to save go to your browser refresh we have one line before it before the or so we've put one line before the or so to put another line after the or you just need to copy this one copy it and paste it change this place to after so this will put another line after the or so go back now and refresh we have two lines and the or so that's how to do it can put some space here put some space here save go back okay so that's it that's basically everything we need to know so we're done with designing facebook page so our next assignment is to design instagram page so if you for example now if you go back to our mobile version you see that the mobile version is there and then the system version is there also so we have the mobile version and the system version so that's that so the assignment we'll be giving you now is to design instagram login page instagram login page so if i go to instagram.com now instagram.com we all know instagram is a popular website so all of us will be designing instagram login page yeah this is instagram login page this is how it looks like so your assignment now is to design instagram login page just the way it is on the system view and on the mobile view don't worry about these images that is changing that is interchanging don't worry about the images that is interchanging just make sure you get this phone this phone and then put this phone that this phone here even if the image is not changing inside this phone no worry don't worry about that lock up we'll, we'll get to that later so but then just make sure that this phone is here and then this instagram design everything the way it is this app icon this app download on play store download on google play everything should be there just design the instagram page just the way it is that is your assignment after this we are going to javascript if you can do this you are good at front end you can design any front end of any website including facebook instagram any website you can basically design it if you can do these two assignments so after this we'll be going to javascript thank you so back to our site you see it's now mobile responsive you inspect and go to your mobile version you see the mobile version is there and then the system version also so that's all for today